Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. So, um, today I am talking about uh, cultural computing. And my background, my creative background is art, uh, because I am an artist. And then, uh, so today, before I talk about uh, cultural computing, I show you some uh, recently my works. Um, this is the uh, um, Kyoto University's uh, digital archives uh, center uh, will be start opening on uh, 31st October this year. Uh, it, as its building is building is you know uh, covered on street, you know Murata Street. It's really quite big building up here. And then uh, I made, uh, you know, first Japanese philosophers, uh, Kitaro Nishida's archive, and uh, first uh, Japanese uh, Nobel uh, Prize professor, um, uh, Hideki Yukawa's. I show you the some, uh, there's movie, uh, some preview showing uh, before opening the center. And then uh, he's a guitar Nishida, and music by you know yesterday's Toshinori uh, uh, Kondo's trumpet. Zen was one of the main themes throughout Nishida's life. On discovering himself, Nishida came to Zen and nothingness. And in speaking of Zen and nothingness, he discovered himself. Nishida was born in 1870 in Ishikawa Prefecture, which situates in north central Honshu Island. Daisetsu Suzuki, an introducer of Zen and Shin to the Occident, was a secondary school classmate. Nishida studied Zen under Setsumon Gensho. Setsumon Gensho is the monk who had received the Dharma transmission at Shokobuji, one of the most prominent Zen Buddhist centers situated in Kyoto. Gensho had once been a Kokutaiji Temple Kancho, or a Buddhist bishop in the Kanazawa area, where Nishida Kitaro had been living his secondary school life. At that time, Nishida Kitaro and Setsumon Gensho came to know each other. Nishida found Zen very attractive but he denied being a Zen monk and tried to speak of himself by referring to Zen. In other words, he tried to discover himself and the philosophical being through Zen practice and to describe Zen in philosophical terms and vice versa. He tried to build a new thought through this procedure. In Zen, there are some famous sayings such as totai natsuraku, which means clear the body, drop things off. Kyakka shoko, which means look under your feet. These are exactly what Zen is. In other words, these are Zen itself and what exactly Zen is. And Nishiya, pursues the possibility of thoughts as such by studying Western philosophy on one hand and the methodology of Zen philosophy on the other. Nishida's struggle first bore fruit as a book, Zen no Kenkyu, 
an inquiry into the good. In actuality, Nishida lost two of his daughters just before publishing this book. It seems that some sort of resignation or determination had occurred in him through such misery. They are not literally written in the book, but we can obviously feel it through his words. After a few years, Nishida wrote in his essay, What had moved me the most was the fact that my young daughters had died what is life if those lovely speaking, charmingly singing children playing just in front of me suddenly disappear and are put into tiny graves as only a few bones? Life is nothing if life is only such a thing. There must be some meaning here. Life would be what he thinks. If sadness was the only thing he had withdrawn from life, life would just be sadness. But can it be so? There might be some more things hidden in life than what he had lost. This obligation to find something there led him to the foundation of his unique philosophy. One of Nishida's main ideas was to overcome the subject-object distinction of Western philosophy. What Nishida was paying attention to was the consciousness prior to differentiating the subject and an object experience which he called Junsui Ishiki, or pure consciousness at the time. It was an arduous effort to comprehend and describe. Taking a look at an infant can give a good example of it. We can say that a subject and object experience is not yet differentiated in an infant's crying and mumbling. It has not yet found itself. However, it starts to say pa and ma, and gradually begins to call itself me, a subject and object experience starts to differentiate. Self-identification and identity start to sprout as itself starts building up. Unfortunately, we tend to forget about these facts prior to self-identification and start our experiences upon concrete selves. Studying the philosophy of Nishida obliges us to reflect upon our selves in life in such a way. After Nishida retired from the chair of the Department of Philosophy of Kyoto University in 1928, he started to pass his summers and winters in Kamakura. It has inspired him to have some new ideas and visions. He presents his ideas successively as Ipansha no Jikakuteki Taike the self-aware system of universals in 1930, and as Muno Jikakuteki Gente, the self-aware determination of nothingness in 1932. In the latter, he argues that Basho, or Topos, which is one of his key concepts, especially in his late years, are a place that both subject and object are enacting and correlating as a whole. Nishida concentrated on this, his signature theory of topos to his death, and developed it as nothingness, or mu, absolute nothingness, zetai mu. What he had stated within the contrast of the subjective being and ontology was the significance of this topos and nothingness, which may be called mi ontology. Nishida then focused on enacting correlations within the topos of absolute nothingness. Koiteki chokan, or action intuition, is the phrase he describes it with. He gradually starts to think about the energy that generates in a place and the effect that is active while someone is acting.
In this way, Nishida reaches his maturity, and the phrase Zetai Mujin Teki Jiko Doitsu, the self-identity of absolute contradictories, marks the essence of his thought. With the self-identity of absolute contradictories, in general, self-identity is a state where logic is clarified by means of a solid united self. In other words, it is believed as a condition that the contradictories are being overcome and therefore the contradictory have disappeared. However, what Nishida had said was the self-identity of absolute contradictories is a relation of the being and the world where contradictories are absolute as such and beings are related as a whole in self-identity. Daisetsu Suzuki, Nishida's lifetime friend, has called this Sokuhi logic. Sokuhi, which literally means A is A because A is not A, is a saying that is very difficult to grasp. In general, is becomes yes or it is. However, he states it as A is A because A is not A. So what does is not mean? The thought could come to a halt right there but it is at this point that absolute affirmation takes place, which was quite similar to and was also deemed Sokuhi logic by Suzuki, but slightly different from Nishida's self-identity of absolute contradictories. So, uh, Nishida says, you know, creativity is used to a very important environment and history and also um, uh, objective. And so, next, my uh, archive movie is um, uh, Yukawa's archive. Um, this movie is, you know, uh, point is uh, his you know, creativity is behind. Um, this is a, his talk. <laughs>
One instance of this was Hideki Yukawa's strong interest in Buddhism, when he would ponder about what Buddhism was. This being a vital part of living in Kyoto, it was amazing that Yukawa could see that his views of Buddhism, or science and mathematics, were missing something, and that this meant there was something lacking within himself. On the occasions that I visited the late Yukawa's home, I would inquire into his thoughts on Buddhism. As written by Hideki Yukawa in his later texts, he basically pondered many things such as what was missing in his own Buddhism theories, how his perception of Buddhism was limited to impermanence or Jodo Buddhism. It was enhanced by Honen or Shinran as parts of Japanese Buddhism, which led to the concept of Namu Amida Buddhism and Jodo. Yet, he took another look at Buddhism and found a different Buddhism, like Zen, which was nothing new to Hideki Yukawa since he had already heard of it in Kitaro Nishida's lectures. But there was also esoteric Buddhism. There was something quite special about esoteric Buddhism as a part of Japanese Buddhism. And despite it being ignored in the Meiji era, Hideki Yukawa focused his attention on Kukai, as he believed the esoteric Buddhism as a train of thought within the Japanese way might be a highly unique part of how Japanese people think. It would be strange for Jodo Buddhist scholars to suddenly turn to this point of view of Kukai it would not be easy for them. For those practicing Zen, it would be difficult to move on to Jodo, as well as Kukai. But as a scientist, Hideki Yukawa constantly pondered what was lacking within himself. This engrossed him. He went through the ingenious works of Kukai to find what was lacking within himself, and while immersing himself in Kukai, he felt something was missing in European logic and logos, as he studied theoretical physics, science, and of course, most importantly, logic. Due to this dissatisfaction, he came in steady contact with and focused on the philosophies of a Japanese intellectual named Bayan Miura, who would be known as a scholar of reasoning following the mid-Edo era. And Yukawa set out to discover what was missing within himself through Japanese thought, Buddhism, and logic. For quite a while, I had forgotten Lao Tzu and Chuang Tzu's philosophies. Four or five years before, I recalled studying Chuang Tzu for a moment while thinking about elementary particles. Then I thought, within the elementary particles, there must be undifferentiated parts among the various elementary particles that have not been differentiated. At that time, I thought if there was any word that I knew that described this, it would be hmm. Normally, a theoretical physicist would not apply Hundun in such a case. There was a time when I would ask the late Hideki Yukawa about his theories of measurement. In measurement theory, you need at least one photon to be able to see the smallest particles, which means you need to shine the smallest light on the smallest particle in order to see it. And in fundamental measurement theory, this means the smallest particle itself is disturbed by the smallest light, and therefore unidentifiable. However, I took this to mean that science will not progress any further, and when I approached Hideki Yukawa with this problem, he said the following. It depends on how you view the difference between what you see and what you do. If you stay focused on that difference, science will cease to progress. Nothing will happen. What you see with, what you plan on seeing with, is what is important. What you have is here, and what you see is over there. And you have to do both. When you do, you have an idea of what it is you have and you see when you are looking. For example, if you are looking at coffee, or a woman, or that tree over there, if you do not think it's a tree, then it's not. And if you look more ambiguously, it's a town. So regardless if you are looking here or over there, 
with what you regard both respectively and together. And you need a science that continuously includes both of the ideas. With this, he told me that a new theoretical physics must aspire to this. This conga. Be land and sky, a voyage or lodge. Birds and humans come and go. So, uh, it, uh, Kyoto University is later a five percent opening in Kyoto. 31st October. Uh, you can see the other you know, Kyoto universities archive uh, in that building. So, um, so what is so now? I'm talking about uh, cultural computing. So, um, cultural computing method is you know how you know uh, take a method uh, aesthetics or you know like a rule or methodology uh, to like you know and then making a connected to the you know, visual analogy and metaphor and like a allegory and then uh, it's visual because in you know, visual analogy you know uh, involved to the you know just, uh, humans spirit feeling and the ethnology and story and so especially Japanese culture, um, I'm talking about Japanese culture because I am Japanese. So um, roots of the you know, spirits is you know very interesting. You know a pair of the you know, um, this is Japanese god and this is you know uh, Buddhism uh, Buddhism god. Uh, for example, Daimyo Nyorai connected to the you know um, the sun goddess like that. This is, you know, um, uh, some very interesting syncretic fusion uh, of Shintoism and Buddhism uh, connected stuff. And also, you know, Japanese uh, cultural aesthetics, important things is, you know, like this, Wabasabi, and it is, you know, very uh, similar with, you know, uh, esprit, like that. It's called, you know, Japanese say another word is iki. Uh, and then another uh, example is, you know, uh, tizen meats. And it is a you know, very uh, simple and uh, but in a very uh, uh, spirituality and a very natural process like that. And another point of view is uh, how, you know, Japanese culture period. Uh, from um, the Chinese culture. You know, Chinese culture, like calligraphy, the poem, and uh, Buddhism, and of course, you know, Zen Buddhism, also um, Sansui painting, in painting also coming from China to Japan, and Tao, and you know, like that. And then in in Japan, Japanese aesthetics make, make a involved to the more um, different things. Another point of point of Japanese aesthetics is what, especially you know, like a haiku, haiku poem, and also this is a Genji a story and pillow book also you know, very important to you know Japanese old old story. So today I am talking about especially closing up to the haiku. And so I show you some uh, haiku is uh, like this, you know, old pond. And this is very, very famous haiku by Basho. All the pond uh, are from jumping on the sound of water. It is, you know, five shrubbers, seven shrubbers, 
Poem syllabus uh, poem. And then uh, we will try to you know um, Japanese poem style. And then uh, we got methodologies in computer model, making a computer model, this kind of you know height model, using a height model, and then making a you know computer sound generated to, to the, you know new new type of the height. So I show you the some demo. And it is, you know, like you know, five syllabus, seven syllabus, five syllabus, and then system, I show you the some demo. And then please show to the, you know my paper in the in abstract. And it was its system is uh, first thing is like a library. And uh, he's called the Sego Matsuoka's my collaborator made in a uh, very conceptual uh, library town. And then a uh, user uh, using to the, choose to the, you know, one books, like a Shakespeare or a Gede or like a, another, you know, country's book and another, you know, uh, different kind of the book, and then uh, people uh, making marking to the text on the book, like Shakespeare or Gildes, uh, and then making a new type of haiku. system that allows you to experience Japanese culture through haiku by pitching together phrases from the context of a thousand books and a thousand nights in the navigation city of books. Let's journey into our creation. Here we have two million books laid out like a town, a city of books if you will. There is a vast array of books, dictionaries, chronological tables, encyclopedias, etc. In the east, there are books from all over Asia. Toward the south, it spans mainly from Greece to Rome, Europe, and America. Toward the west, we have books on biochemistry, electronics, and media or technology. And in the north are the histories of matter and life, and those of languages and human society. Among all of the works compiled, there is a couple. Then, uh, this is in all. System. This is a library town, and then I think you know, here is a you know, mostly audience is physics people, and then I'm choosing to the sun uh, beyond of time and space area. You know, depend on the put on the sun space, some books keyword is appear. And then I choose to the here. Curious time and spaces. And Joji Gamov's and uh, Mr. Tompkins' Wonderland appears. And then my collaborator Sego Matsuoka's books, uh, One Thousand Night, One Thousand Books is you know a kind of um, uh, books, uh, some uh, talking about books. 
critics. The here is uh, um, George Gamow's books. And then this is a Japanese text. And then some kanji, uh, Chinese word marking, for example. And then translate by English. Uh, green marking is some you know, temporary marking. And then I try to learn you know, how to make it into the George Gamow's books, make it into the haiku. So I just do the forward and then uh, finally I'm deciding to the two words uh, it's seen and quantum and then calculate now And at that time, computer, you know, uh, selected to the word, connected to the kineji, it's called ya or you know, kana, and like that. And then, uh, of course, computer connected to the more kind of shisora's word. This is the English high up here. And then I show to the Japanese high school. Mm. And the database is, you know, uh, the four seasons uh, what? Almost, you know, 20,000 words. And then next high school calibration. Using the same word. Quantum and it seems. Okay, it's a, I think it's a, my time almost finished and then I will stop. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>